So I've made a stereo camera for object detection and distance estimation using two ESP32 cams and in this video I'll show you exactly how I did that. Hey everyone, so today I'm making a stereo camera with the ESP32 cam and to make a stereo camera basically I need two cameras and with two cameras I can re like reconstruct the uh, three-dimensional world from a two-dimensional projection uh, using geometry but what I do need is I need these I guess to tighten to a grid so I need these two constrained at a certain distance while I take photographs because I need to be able to measure all that for the geometry and it would be best if they're at the same height so it would be good to have some kind of I guess grid structure to connect these two and the perfect thing for this which gives us a natural grid structure is a piece of perf board, I suppose. We have these natural grid structure here, which we can then connect these two cameras to. So now here's one I prepared earlier. So all I've done is I've soldered on these female header pins to the perf board. And then I've uh, broken out a couple of wires from each side for the, for the power connection and then put a battery shield there with an 18650 um, battery and then I've just I've um, I've cut open this USB cable and um, soldered on a couple of jumper leads onto here which I've connected to this to the power leads here so I can just plug the the cameras into here so I can just plug a right camera in and a left camera in And there we go, we've got a stereo camera for the ESP32. And I'm gonna use this for object detection and distance estimation. So I'm gonna run this through a bit of Python code that I've written, and I'll show you how I've, I've set all that up in the next scenes. But first I'm gonna discuss a little bit of the theory to do with a uh, stereo camera and uh, in light of, I guess, uh, computer vision. Okay, I'll see you in the next scene. Before I go through the code setup and the geometry of the stereo camera, I'm just gonna give a little demonstration of how it works. So I've just got it mounted here on this, on this bit of Lego stand that I made. And then I've got this Lego person and a little toy car about 20 centimeters and 30 centimeters from the camera respectively. So on the left side, I've got the left camera, which is called left eye. And on the right side, I've got the right camera, which is called right eye. And these are streaming through Python. So when I press P, it'll, it'll do the inference. And it takes about five or six seconds um, on my CPU, but it's a little bit slower when I'm uh, running OBS, which is what I'm using to record off the screen. Okay, so it says the car is 30.4 centimetres, which is fairly accurate because I've got it at about 30 centimetres. It thinks the Lego person is 18.6 centimetres away, and it detects that it's a person as well and that's a car, so that's another thing. Um, and it's about 20 centimetres away. And then the computer monitor, which it thinks is a TV, which is close enough, um, it thinks it's about 57.3 centimetres away, and that's about right. It's about 56 centimetres away. So all in all, that's working pretty good, and it thinks this little, um, this little uh, mark on the wall here, which is a mark in the paint, a chip in the paint, is a bird, and it thinks the bird is 66.5 centimetres away. So that's, that's actually fairly accurate. Okay, so now I'm going to take you through the geometry of the of the stereo camera and the code. Okay, so hey everyone. So I've just got the two cameras running the webcam server um, example that comes with the Arduino IDE 1.8. And so I've got the left camera on the left side and the right camera on the right side. And I've just got them mounted on this um, on like this piece of Lego here, just to keep them steady. 
I'll just start streaming and I'll see we'll see what that looks like. So we see um each image each camera's got this um this vanish bottle in view. So I'll just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it a bit better. I'll change the resolution. Let's have a look. Okay, so we see that the the right image the bottle is a little bit further to the left and the left image the bottle is a little bit further to the right and because it's far away it's not really that that pronounced but as we move it closer it gets it gets more obvious so this is quite close and the right image it's way over to the left and the left image it's way over to the right and we can see that quite easily and we can use this distance this this um, width to work out how how far away the object is and re that's this is how we reconstruct the 3d world um, so the geometry is not that difficult it's just solving a bunch of equations and I'll go through that with you in a few minutes um, the challenging part for this at least from a computer vision point of view is matching the features between the left image and the right image so how do we know this part of the right image matches this part of the left image? And for us, it's fairly obvious, but we've got a very complex optical nerve system, but for, the, um, for a computer, it's a little bit more difficult. So one of the things I'm doing in my spare time is a graduate diploma in AI. Um, in my day job, I work in a bank, and this is just at night to keep my mind a bit busy and also help me with my robotics projects. Um, and one of the subjects we're, we're doing uh, in the course is computer vision. And the stuff we're learning about in this computer vision subject just blows my mind. It just blows me away how advanced some of this stuff is. Um, so I did my PhD in image processing about 20 years ago before I worked in a bank. And what we were doing then, we could have only dreamed about um, what they're doing now we could have only dreamed about back then um, we've come so far so anything before about 2012 is is like considered like Newtonian mechanics kind of kind of thing so um, anything basically predating AlexNet in 2012 um, so one of the things we went over in quite some detail in this computer vision class was um, was this pedestrian tracking algorithm and how to implement this in Python and so basically what it does is it, is it segments people and it tracks them um, walking across a busy station. So now this got me thinking. Stereo vision is just the same as tracking. We're tracking from the left image to the right image. So left, that's the right, to right. So I'm going to apply this tracking algorithm to the stereo camera, but in, in the case of the stereo camera, we've got a few more constraints. Whereas these pedestrians, they can move in any direction. For the stereo camera, we only can move left to right, basically. We can only move in one direction and we don't move up and down because I've got the cameras fixed at the same level. So we're only moving really um, from the left, we're only moving from the left image, we're only moving right, basically, right. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over the geometry of the stereo camera very briefly. All right, okay, so let's just consider what happens if we've got one camera. So we've got our camera here and our object here, say. And the object says distance D1 from the camera and it's filling the whole camera and let's say it's D2 wide and this point here is the focal point of the camera so it's going to be like this so this is our focal length and D1 so the distance away from the camera is equal to f plus d1 all right 
So now let's assume this is x1. So now in the literature, a lot of the time, they use these similar triangles. So they'll say um, x1 over f equals d2 over d1. So basically d1 equals f d2 over x1. Now the issue with doing this with a digital camera is, so that's an f, the issue with doing this with a digital camera is x1 is in pixels and d2 is in centimeters. So I mean there's ways we can compare them but what I prefer to do is instead of using um, x1 and d2 I use here theta. So now we've got tan theta equals d2 over 2 over d1. So therefore d1 equals d2 over 2 tan theta. All right, so now say we've got an object here, which is D3 across, okay? So now, I guess by similar triangles, we can say D3 over D2 equals P over N, where N is the total pixels and P is the pixel count of, of this object. All right, so let's say the object is a car. And it's P pixels across and this is N pixels across, right? Okay, so now we can say D2 equals ND3 over P. And we can substitute this back into D1. And therefore, we get the distance equals ND3 over 2P tan theta plus f. So f is our focal length and p is our pixel count and d3 is the distance of our object. So if we know the distance of our object we can we can measure how far away it is. And now how can, how do you think we can measure the distance in terms of pixels in the image? One way to do this is to add another camera. So if we add another camera in here, let's say, and then we can match these points in the images. Let's say this camera is DC across. So now we've got our second camera. And, oh, so that's not to scale. And this point here, matches this point and because our cameras are DC across we know this many pixels here corresponds to DC so with two cameras with a with a stereo pair what we get is the following we get the distance equals N, which is the number of pixels, how many pixels wide it is, DC, which is the distance between the cameras, 2P tan theta plus F. And now tan theta and F are constants and DC is a constant and P we have to count. P we have count how many um, pixels the corresponding point is between one image and the other. And the way we can, I guess, find tan theta and f is we can use known distances. So if we know it, if we if we measure the distance, 
with a ruler say, and then take a photograph of it, then we can back out tan theta and F. So we can have A1 equals NDC over two P1 tan theta. And this we just get by counting P1 and plus F and A2 equals N, sorry, I should move that up a bit, equals N DC over two P2 tan theta plus F. So we can solve this pair and get out tan theta and F, which is what I've done. And I'll take you through the notebook that, that uses that. So we'll go through the notebook next. But the challenging part of this isn't the geometry because all these equations are solved for us. And there's lots of documentation on this. The challenging point is ma the challenging part is matching this point with this point in the image, um, and and then counting the pixels. So once we've done that, we we can we can measure our distance. So I've got the bottle thirty centimeters away from the camera, so I know the distance. So I'm going to take a left image and a right image, and I'm going to use these to back solve for theta and the focal length of the camera. Okay, so copy image. Okay, now I'm gonna move the camera a little bit further, either, sorry, I'm gonna move the bottle a little bit further away from the camera and I'm gonna take two more two more images. So I'm just going to move it, I think, 50 centimetres from the camera. That's about 50 centimetres there. All right, and then I'm going to save two more images and I'm going to use these to back solve um, for theta and, uh, and the focal length because I need two sets of images because I've got two parameters to solve for basically. So copy image. All right, so now I've got those two sets of images. Um, I'll put them through my Python demo notebook and we'll, we'll work out theta and the focal length of the camera. Hey everyone, so this is a demo notebook that I've set up which matches objects detected in a left image to objects detected in a right image and calculates how far the object is away and it just takes in two images. It doesn't connect to the camera yet. I've just set this up basically to um, calculate the parameters of the model. So this is the tan theta and the focal length of the camera. Um, and I'll just go through this because it is quite explanatory. So I'm using the mask RCNN model from the PyTorch framework. And this model um, basically, it does an object segmentation and labeling for 80 different classes. Um, and it, it does a mask segmentation, which is basically, uh, it puts like a pixel mask over, over the object, which um, I thought I could use this because I can then tweak it um, a little bit later on. Um, and then I've also put some links to some documentation here. So this is just like for visualization, but I've used um, so it does provide some visualization, but I've used a lot of other functions for visualization, uh, which are a bit lower level. And the reason I've used those is it allows me to get a little bit deeper under the hood. So I guess the first thing I do is I import my libraries, which is what you do with any Python code. And then, um, I define all my auxiliary functions. So, um, so load image just loads the image from a file pre-process image this is quite important because it, it converts the image into a tensor which um which it needs to be for input into the model into the segmentation model um display image this displays an image and display image pair this displays two images side by side and this is important because um i'm using a stereo camera so i need to display the left image and the right image side by side and then I read in my images so I've got a left eye image and a right eye image this is the images I one one set is 50 centimeters and the other set is 30 centimeters away so to get the 30 centimeter one you just change that to 30 
and then this one will just get the 50 centimeter where the bottle was 50 centimeters away the one that I took before and this just loads the images and um, plots the images so this here is the left image and this here is the right image um, and we see there's three objects there's a computer screen a bottle and a tape measure um, and then I, I get the model so the model is just the um, just the mask CNN model so this just defines the model um, and then model of val just means that I'm using the model for inference um, so the get detections function just passes the images um, into the model for detection and it returns these four um, these four objects debt which are the bounding boxes so debt naught are the bounding boxes for the left image Debt one is the bounding boxes for the right image and labels are the class labels scores are the the confidences um, and masks are the segmentation masks so I I I do all that here and then I can see what I've got so it's to find a bottle a TV and a cell phone in the left image and a bottle a cell phone and a TV in the right image so basically um, it thinks that this tape measure is a cell phone and the computer monitor is a TV which is close enough for the computer monitor and these functions are here are for visualization so draw detections draws the bounding boxes annotate class annotates the class label and draw instance um, segmentation mask just puts a, a segmentation mask um, like a semi-transparent mask over the image so I've done that I here I've done the annotation and the boxes and then here I put the segmentation mask over the image so this is all in the code here and you can look through that and then this is this gets the horizontal distance between the centers so basically these functions return so this function get horizontal distance sensor center um, returns each object to every other object so returns the distance of the center between this object, this object, this object, and this object. So it returns like a matrix, which um, the ijth entry is the ith object in the left image and the jth object in the right image and the distance between the centers. And I use those, and I use that for matching a bit later on. Um, so that's part of my cost function. So the cost function basically consists of three properties or differences between objects in the image. So the first thing we consider is the, is the vertical move in the bounding box. So um, because for the, for the camera we've got our two, for the stereo camera we've got our two cameras level, um, we don't expect any, any vertical move um, between the objects in the left image and objects in the right image. So we penalize quite heavily for that in the cost function. And then the next feature we use is the area of the bounding box because we've got the same object. So we expect them to be around about the same area. I mean, we do notice that the monitor here, because it's off the screen, um, more in the right image than in the left image, the area is different. So, um, so that will affect it a little bit, but then because of the other features, it'll it'll get a closer match. And then the next feature we use is the horizontal move. So we note that from the left image to the right image, the object moves to the right. So we penalize it more heavily if it's moved to the left. So we, we calculate the move to the right, and then we multiply moves by the left by, by a factor of 10. So, so this will, um, this means that hopefully they won't get matched if it moves, if it moves the wrong way. Um, and then the other thing we do is we add in a penalty if they if they've got different class labels and then we, we do an optimization on this. So the cost function here returns a matrix where the I J th entry is the I th object in the left image and the jth object in the right image so we match these objects to um, I guess minimize the to minimize the cost and we use this scipy optimize linear sum assignment for this and um, the, the advantage of using this function is it does like a global optimization so say we have two objects in the left image and these move in the right image like this 
then um, then it's more optimal to assign this to this. This will this will be minimum, but then it's less optimal to assign this um, this one to this one. So we don't really want to do this. What we want is a more global optimization. So we would prefer something like this, which um, which is better, which is a better optimization overall. So this is what this um, scipy optimize linear assignment function does, and it returns this. It returns basically um, two arrays. And these are the indexes for the left image, and these are the indexes for the right image. So the zeroth object in the left image goes with the zeroth object in the right image. Um, the first object in the left left image goes with the second, with the index two object in the right image, and the index two object in the left image goes with the index one object in the right image. So we can use those to match, and I've matched those here, and we've got the bottle match with the bottle, the TV match with the TV, and the cell phone match with the cell phone. And now the next thing we do is we can calculate the distance in centimeters. So I've done the calibration and these are the calibration formulas here, which I've shown you. So I've calculated it for 50 centimeters and 30 centimeters. Um, and then I've done this previously. Um, so, um, so the next thing we do is we calculate the distances. And the way we do that is we get the horizontal distance from between the top left of the box and the horizontal distance between the bottom right and we take the one that's closest to the center so say for the um for the the monitor which is a good example because it's off the screen we get the horizontal distance between here and here and between here and here and we take whichever whichever one is closest to the center and because this is closest to the center um we just take the horizontal distance between that and that and the reason why we take the horizontal distance um, between the corner that's closest to the between the corners that's closest to the center is just um, in case it's going off the screen. So if we're looking at this and this, then we've basically we've got a horizontal distance of zero. So we do that, and then um, once we find the distance, we can we can um, show the image with the distance. So the TV, which is actually the monitor, is fifty four point eight centimeters. And that's fairly accurate. The bottle, it gives a distance of 50 centimeters, which that makes sense because I've used 50 centimeters to, to calibrate the parameters of the model. And then the cell phone, which is actually a tape measure, um, gives about 52 centimeters, which is kind of about right. I think it's more like 51 centimeters, but it, it, seems, it seems fairly close. So the next thing to do is to stream the image from the ESP32 directly into the Python code and do the calculations. So that'll be next and um, I'll show you how I do that in the next scene. Hi everyone. So to get a live feed from the ESP32 cam into Python, I'm following this project by Daniel Rossi on Hackster.io. Now Daniel um, loads onto this ESP32, the camera web server sketch from Arduino um, 1.8 IDE. And um, this sketch might not compile if you're using a uh, platform IO or a later or Arduino IDE 2.0 because I think some of the functionality um, might be deprecated. Um, so if you want to load the sketch, you either have to roll back your board manager or you have to use Arduino IDE 1.8. And the reason why some of the functionality is deprecated is because it uses the face, um, some of the facial recognition stuff from the DL lib. So, um, so you, could, you could also delete the face recognition stuff from the sketch. But the important things that he uses from the sketch, there's two very important things. And the first one is the command handler and the other one is the stream handler. And now the stream handler um, comes with a lot of other sketches that you find um, online on various projects. So you could just load one of those sketches and use the stream handler. Well, you'd think so. But there's one very important difference that I'm going to point out to you now. So this is the sketch from the camera web server. 
And this is the, this is a sketch that I've downloaded from Instructables. And both of them have a stream handler, but there's one very important difference. This stream handler, the one from Instructables, sends the boundary after it sends the, the data. Whereas this one on the camera web server sends the boundary first. So to get the stream handler to work with the Python code, to get this to stream to Python, what we need to do is we need to swap this line around. So we need to take this line from here and copy it to here and then it will work. Otherwise it will freeze when you try to use this with Python. And then the other thing we need is the command handler. So the command handler, the command handler here, which takes, which takes the, um, the requests from Python to the ESP32, um, you can use this, so you can, you can put this into another sketch, but what you have to do is you have to get rid of all the face recognition stuff. So all this stuff down here, you have to just delete all this, all this face detection stuff, and then you can use this, you can put this into another sketch. Hey everyone, so I'm just going to take you through the Python notebook that takes the live feed from the two SP32 cams and does the object detection, labeling and distance estimation. So now I've put all the definitions, all the function definitions into a .py file, stereo image utils .py file. Um, so these were all the function definitions that I included in the notebook um, that I used for calibrating the camera. And then I'm just importing that here and I'm importing all the functions I need from that as well. So next I've defined the URLs. So the URL for the left camera and the URL for the right camera. Um, so you'll just have to replace those with your own uh, URLs. And these are, the, um, these are the camera parameters, the focal length and the tan theta that I calibrated earlier. Um, so I capture the left camera using the CV2 library. So just capture the URL and the stream, and then I capture the right camera as well. So these are the camera feeds here, cap left and cap right. Um, and then there's a bunch of functions here, which I got from, from, this, from this tutorial here, from this project here, um, Daniel Rossi's project. Um, and these functions, they just send a request back to the camera. So this one changes the resolution, this one changes the quality, and this one sets the AWB. So these just use the command handler that's in the, um, in the ESP32 sketch, sketch to communicate back to the ESP32. And you can basically um, rewrite these to send any data you like back to the ESP32, which is, um, which is the chief reason why I wanted to use use this this project here because it it um, had a method for doing that for sending data back to the ESP32 as well as receiving data from the ESP32 because the other um, projects I looked at only received a feed from the camera but they didn't we didn't have any way of communicating back to the camera back to the uh, microprocessor. So in the main function, uh, what the notebook does, the first thing it does is it sets the resolution on the ESP32s. So I'm using index equals 10, and this corresponds to UXGA, which is 1600 times 1200. So that's the highest resolution that I'm using at the moment, but you can use lower resolutions if you like, and it, it does work pretty well with lower resolutions. And then the next thing it does is it displays the, the two images, the left image and the right image. So these are just the video um, feeds. And then if that all works, if, uh, if ret R and ret L, it display, it does the inference on the images. So, um, and then it, once it does the inference, it will display the, the, the object detect the, the detected objects and um, annotate the annotate the label and the distance estimation as well. Um, so that all happens here. And then these are the key presses. So it waits for a key press. And if you press R, 
then you can change the resolution. If you press Q, you can set the quality. Um, if you press P, you'll do the inference. So I won't do the inference on every image it captures. It'll only do the inference after you press P. And the reason I didn't do the inference um, continuously is because it's quite slow. And then 27 is escape. So if you press escape, it'll break. And now I'm just gonna leave you with a, with a demonstration of the camera. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.